Hi everyone, I'd like to share with you today about how to write for an apology. So there will be tips and ideas which I think will be helpful for everyone. So writing an apology is different from saying an apology because it's less direct. It's not immediate, okay? We have more time to think of the words of the reasons why we are apologizing. So that's the main difference. Of course, these all stem from the same thing mistakes, which is a normal human thing. We all make errors, we all make bad things, right? So it is an important skill to have to write a proper apology. So normally we would write a letter or an email to apologize for something, but we can sometimes write in a less formal situation, you know, like in an instant message, an SMS, or maybe a Facebook or line message, we may need to write to apologize to someone for something. Um, you know, we could apologize for our own mistakes, like being late, okay, making an error, missing a deadline, or missing an appointment, or maybe um, saying sorry for um, an, inappropriate, an inappropriate behavior. Like maybe we were too loud, we said something rude, maybe we were drunk, okay? And there are also situations where we need to apologize for someone else. Maybe our cat, you know, scratched someone else's sofa or, you know, our child breaking something or maybe like um, our team member or our employee doing something inappropriate. We may need to apologize on their behalf. So that's what we are focusing on today, writing for an apology. So first of all, when writing for an apology, we can use either of these two phrases to start with. So the first one is, I apologize. And the second one is, I am sorry. But it's not enough to just write, I apologize, full stop, or I'm sorry, full stop, okay? We need to be specific. We need to tell the recipient, that is the person who is reading our letter or email, what we are sorry, what we are apologizing for. Uh, for example, we can say, I apologize for breaking your share, or maybe I'm sorry for the delayed delivery. See, we need to tell the reader what we feel bad for. And also, um, I think it's more common for in a business situation, you know, like a customer making a complaint, if someone makes a complaint to you before you have the chance to write an apology, we should also thank them. So we can write like, um, thank you for letting us know about our delivery. Thanking, uh, thank you for letting us know about the missing items. Yeah, see, we can say things like that. So just like to acknowledge the uh, the to be recipient. So the person who's going to be the reader that we have received their words and we understand them. Okay, we can also um, summarize what they've said. For example, um, I understand that you have received the wrong model. I understand that you have received the wrong item. We can say that as well. Now, after apologizing, after thanking okay, the, the customer, we can also sympathize, sympathize with them. For example, we can say, um, uh, you have every right to feel upset about this situation. Or maybe we can say, um, I can see that you are very disappointed. So we use these words and phrases to show that, you know, we feel the same as the customer, okay, the recipient, and that if you were in that situation, you would feel the same as well, okay? This is to make them feel better that, you know, you're not just like writing a an apology letter from a template, okay? But you actually feel the same as them. And now after you have written all the um, apologizing and stuff like that, we also need to tell them what you do to solve the problem or to make up for them. Um, for example, we can say that we will send the item to them again, or we will issue a refund, okay? Or maybe we will send them a gift card, for example. Maybe we can say we will buy them a new piece of item. So tell them what you do to remedy the problem. And then after that, we can say things like, um, we are certain, we are sure that this 
uh, incident will not happen again. Okay, just to give the reader assurance that you know they will not have to face the same error, same mistake again. And you know, since the apology letter or email is kind of negative, right? Because we're talking about um, something that we did wrong, we can actually end it with a more positive note. So we can say, I look forward to talking to you again, or maybe uh, we look forward to serving you again. We look forward to working with you again. We can say things like that in the last sentence before signing off the letter or the email, okay? Since we have apologized, we have, um, you know, uh, compensate them made up for our errors and we have also given them assurance it is totally fine to end in a more positive note like since you know you have and we have understood our errors we have fixed it we have guaranteed that it will not happen again we can say things like okay we hope to still continue to be um you know doing business together in the future that is totally fine and then you can just sign off your letter or email or if it's an instant message, you don't need to sign off. And these are the things we need to include when we write for an apology. Now, let's talk about things we don't have, uh, we should not, we must not include. So the first thing, when we apologize, we have to be specific, okay? We don't want to generalize. The, so to generalize is to say like, I'm sorry, or we apologize for everything, okay? It is impossible for one person or one company to be wrong in every aspect. So we need to be specific what about what we are actually wrong about. And the second one is when we apologize, don't try to be too, too dramatic, okay? Um, you know, things like, I was afraid that you would not talk to me again, or like, I felt so bad that I couldn't sleep last night. Things like that is too dramatic. You know, it will not sound sincere to the reader. So just try to um, keep your tone in the neutral side of things, okay? And also when you decide to apologize for something, um, we must never, justify or defend our actions. So don't say things like, I'm sorry, but I think what I did was correct. This is not good enough, okay? Don't try to make excuses. And also don't deflect the blame to someone else or something else. So don't blame your child, don't blame your colleague, your friend, don't blame your team member, don't blame your employee, okay? Just blame yourself. And also don't blame your tool. So um, you know, if you if the address on the package is wrong, you can't blame your keyboard or your computer, okay? Because you 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 were the the person who typed that address, so you have to blame yourself. If the screw is not tight, you can't blame the screwdriver because you were the one doing the tightening of the screw, okay? Always blame yourself. Don't blame other people. Don't blame other tools. And yeah, that's all. Um, the things that you should keep in mind. So remember, start with I apologize or I'm sorry and then tell them what you're sorry for, okay? And you can thank them for letting you know for making a complaint and also sympathize with the reader and then tell them what you do, the course of action you do to fix it, okay? Followed by giving them assurance that the same problem will not happen again and then end on a more positive note. So that's your complete apology, whether it is a letter, whether it is an email or even instant messages. All right. So that's all for today. If you have written an apology of any kind before and you would like to share with me, please do so. I would be glad to hear about that. OK, so just let me know in the comments or if you have questions or suggestions, please also do let me know. All right. So that's all from me for, for today. And I will see you next time, okay? Goodbye.